I'm Andrew Murphy. I'm uh, been in athletics now since I was eight, so just over 20 years. Um, I was a decathlete by trade for the majority of that time. Um, Scottish heptathlon record holder, um, ran for Team GB and got to travel about a wee bit with that. So um, finished at the end of last season and I've since turned my attentions to a bit of long distance running. Got the, had the Glasgow Half Marathon in October there and then now targeting Belfast Full Marathon come May time. What's brought change on from the decathlon to the um, so when I was in decathlon, I did it for loads of years, was trying to go to, you know, things like Commonwealth Games and um, that was always my target and I was really involved and decathlon's one of those events where it was pretty full on. Um, got a wee boy now, he's two, and whenever he was born I was a bit like, am I still, am I still in this sport? What's the, what's the long term plan? So I went as far as last season, tried to keep it going. and. Um, came to a natural end at British Championships, was happy enough to leave it there and when I finished I was thinking right what's next, what do I do, I've got all this kind of free time and my dad's been a runner for years and years and I always used to take the mic out of him and be like oh, I can beat your times, I can beat that time, <laughs> so that's how I got into it and um, I've definitely got the bug for it now. So what, what is your dad's time for the marathon? Uh, 3.19. So that's a big target? Yeah, so I put in, a, put it in at the start of when you enter, what's your target time? It's like 3.15, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> How's he feeling for it? Is he getting a bit sweaty feet? Is there any bets on there? Well, like well, I beat him at Glasgow, so that was the first time was I'd he beaten him. Glasgow? He raced at Glasgow, yeah. Um, and that's the first time I've beaten him over anything longer than a, like a mile. Um, <laughs> so I'm in his head, for sure. You've got a slight age gap on him, but to be fair. Aye, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a bit, he's got about 20 kilos less than me, though. <laughs> But obviously you've seen you've done the calf on there for quite a while, what was the what was the training like for that? For them they didn't know like So yeah it was full on. I was um especially the last kind of like eight or so years, eight to ten years, I was training with uh, good old Colin Sinclair and he had me like whipped into shape and I was lifting uh, two or three times a week. I was at the track every day essentially except for a Saturday. Some days were double days, trying to balance it around work and I worked part time at the time so I could fit in the training. So, you know, trying to hit all the events across the week, you're running, you're jumping, you're throwing, um, and at the same time, stay injury free was the main battle. What was the hardest thing to train for? Like? I think obviously, physically, your, your lactic sessions were the hardest. So training for your 400, making sure you were fit, making sure you were robust. Your gym sessions were long as well. Like I was in there, you know, two or three hours, so don't get me wrong, I loved it, um, but it was a big commitment. I think psychologically, especially towards the end, pole vault was a big one. It was tough, it's scary, and the older you get, the more sensible you get, <laughs> um, and it becomes difficult, yeah, for sure. In terms of the pole vault, like, did you ever have one of the pole snapping? That was one of the questions that quite a few folks yeah, asking, like. Yeah, definitely. I snapped a pole. Um, it actually took me till I was quite a bit older before yeah. I actually snapped one, and it pung right across my chest and had this big bruise across here. Um, other than that, like you've fallen off the pole and stuff before. Uh -huh. um, so that was the only kind of, like, I tore my pec a wee while ago towards the end of my career. Uh -huh. And before that, the only major injury I had had was from pole vault, falling off the pole and doing all the ligaments and stuff and my ankle. Um, but yeah, only one pole snap. Yeah. <laughs> How does it happen? It's just the force that hang of it? Like, exactly, like, I think uh, the way I did it, I was just like messing about using a pole that I probably shouldn't have been using. Um, and then I paid the price for it, so it was too, it was based for somebody who was lighter than me. And, right. And I just, it crumbled under pressure. <laughs> in, in terms of sort of pole vault and decathlon as a whole, like how did you end up getting into that sort of thing? I know you said your dad had a, a background in running, but how did you sort of yeah. get into the actual decathlon? So, when I was a kid, like, I just loved running, I loved competing, super competitive, um, was rubbish at football, <laughs> um, and I just did every event that I could, I was loving throwing, I was loving running, I loved jumping, I loved all of it, so when people were choosing events, I was never really outstanding at one event, so I was like, I'm just going to keep it going, I just loved doing them all, and then naturally progressed into decathlon, yeah. I did the first one when I was like 15, and I remember being so buzzing for it, I used to drive up from Girvan to Glasgow at Kelvin Hall, to pole vault from like as soon as I possibly could. 
Yeah, it's because it's like one of the things where it's like everyone enjoys watching it, but not a lot of folk compete in it. But it could work in where you represented and you're sort of like the end of your career. Like, you had a really good group of boys, wasn't it? It's got a few, so done it. Like. Exactly, yeah. Like, but towards Colin brought in a lot of people, and he would never say no to people joining the group as well. So we had like Scott, Scott Connell, and Howard Bell, um, were the, and Matty Chandler was the core group of the older boys and the younger boys coming through. It was like Scott Bindley and Murray Fotheringham. I mean, uh, there was lots of people that came and went uh-huh. um, in the group. And I think it was just like the attraction of training all together because everybody knows what what the um, you know what the script is for training. Yeah. So it worked. Isn't it, if obviously if folk want to get involved a lot, how would they go about getting involved? But... I think like from a young age, it's just doing as much as you possibly can. I'm definitely a big believer in um, trying all the different events and keeping it going as long as possible and then just finding the right coach that, that works with you and I think training partners is a big thing because training on your own is bad so if you can find somebody else that wants to do it then that's the big thing. Thanks and then today obviously some a bit of a different session, what's in the cards for you today? So I've got, um, it's fairly short in comparison to the distance world, I'm sure I'll get laughed at but 5 times 800 off 90 seconds, I've got a 10k um, in a three three weeks, so we're just trying to speed the legs a wee bit after the half marathon training. So today's uh, pace, obviously we're targeting the 10k, are we going faster or slower? We're just or? a wee bit faster than the 10k pace, hopefully not too much faster, but I'm terrible at that, at that pace, so we'll see. <laughs> Folk will be like, he's just pretending to warm up, because <laughs> I will never warm up. Shouting you on there. Hello. <laughs> so that's that Andy Murphy, Scottish decathlon champion. <laughs> <laughs> He's sending it. <laughs>
landed pretty well, but he was finishing downhill here. I know, I know. Good planning. Seven heart. <laughs> <laughs> How was that line? That was quite fast looking. Oh my god, it was all right. Yeah, I think halfway through I was like, oh, I'm chilling here, and then towards the end I was, uh, I was the heart rate through the roof. <laughs> what did the heart rate hit? I think I peaked at 207 to 8. <laughs> <laughs> must be wrong, must be wrong. Oh, there's a bike coming. Uh, yeah, so just in terms of the cap on again, like obviously, for a lot of folk won't be too familiar with how, how the scoring system and stuff like that works. How, how do the points and that sort of correspond to like obviously on the leaderboard sort of thing? Like how, how do you sort of collect points along the way? Yeah, so it's all based in some big like formula. Um, it's based off of like, if I'm right, oh, this is so bad of me, but I'm sure it's like back in the day, whatever the world record was, was a thousand points. Um, it's been changed now based on like updated world records, so people can score more than a thousand points, because obviously the athletics has moved on. Um, so they get it after each event and they tally it up and whoever's got the most points at the end is the winner. And certain events, the athletes tend to be better at, so things like pole vault, hurdles, uh, the jumps, like they get a lot of big, they're big point scorers. Whereas events like throws tend to carry less weight just because we're comparatively not as good at it, but running and jumping are your, are your strongest ones. What was your Scottish record? How many points did you tell you? So that was the heptathlon indoors. All right. Um, I scored 5,662 points. And it was quite a funny story because I had done three, three heptathlons that year. One was to qualify for the indoor international with the UK team. Um, went away to that down in Cardiff. It's like an international match against some of the other European countries, Poland and Spain and France and that. Um, and I missed the record by like 12 points down there um, which is like the equivalent of a second in the thousand meters Jeez, yeah. and I was absolutely like on my on death's door yeah. at that thousand meters trying to get it and then we went back to the drawing board right we'll do Scottish it's uh, three weeks later and we went for it and just all had a really really good weekend it was a bit it was proper like Hollywood dramatics at the end because I'm pole what was going really well at the time and I banked on jumping 497 to make sure I was going to get it. And I missed 497 and I jumped 487. And I was like, oh God, I need to. I had ran 246 in the 1,000 metres down in the international. And that nearly killed me. And I had to run 243 to break the record. Um, I was so nervous. I went out, did it, and like, obviously scored it. Was buzzing, but like dead on the ground. The junior race went, the under-17s race went, and I was still on the ground and I had to postpone the medal ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good, it was worth it. <laughs> but you're saying there as well, it's sort of like the cap and stuff, like, it's quite a sort of like, it's a very, maybe a unique sport in terms of athletics, but it's like quite sort of team sort of camaraderie and stuff like that, even yeah. people competing against each other, like, yeah, how did sure. that sort of come out, and like, how did you find maybe like, competing against folk who like, obviously you're quite close with? Like, yeah, I think, I think because you are out there the whole time, like two days worth 
and you're just constantly in each other's company. You eat together, like you're usually sharing rooms with people in the same hotel and stuff. So you get so close with other guys and it's like, I'm sure people will roast me for this, but it is like the decathlon brotherhood and all that at the end of it. Everyone's like, you go out together, you have lunch, you're, uh, you're having dinner after the, the event and you're going out partying and stuff. It's a brilliant atmosphere and because you are, it's like shared hardship, I think, because you're spending so much time together and everyone hates the 400 and hates the 15. <laughs> like, you've got something to talk about at the end and you just grow so close because it's quite a small circle, like you mentioned, that you, you get really close to the guys. What do you think can be done to sort of increase maybe the sort of like folk competing in the sport, sort of getting more folk involved, especially in Scotland? But... I mean, I think there's been like a big increase in combined events across the board in Scotland in the last few years. There was guys before me that really brought it on from when I was a kid, um, and I just tried to replicate that. Um, and, bef- and there's people coming through, like my Scottish record in the heptathlon, without a doubt, will get beat in the next few years. Yeah. There's so many talented kids coming through, and even just behind me, that it'll definitely go. And that's because every year the boys are just pushing each other on and pushing each other on and having breakthroughs and I think it only takes one person to do something um, and everybody else thinks I can do that and that's why it's been such a, a raised profile and we've got guys in America now and all over the UK training and basing their life around combined events, it's, it's really good to see. Yeah, you still talk that you're still really passionate about it, is it, is it something you would, you'd want to stay involved in, maybe in coaching or something like that in the future? Like? Maybe in the future, yeah, like I had definitely had my share of combined events when when I finished, uh-huh. like I was needing a, a break, I was needing away from athletics in general, I'd been in it long enough, Yeah. but I think when I'm when I'm older, I'll be when my wee boy's bigger and wanting to get involved, that's how Colin, Coach Colin got involved oh, with right? his sons, uh-huh. and maybe I'll do the same at that point, never say never, you know. You came across the, the sort of first Friday Run Club last Sunday, how, how did you find that? I thought it was brilliant, I like, I love the whole, the whole movement of stride, I think it's brilliant and I'd be keen to do the, the Fast 5k in the future and um, try and chase PBs and stuff because it's, it's, it's what we need in the sport is just raising the profile of all the events and that whole thing about the run club was at the different paces and being really accessible and having a coffee and that afterwards like I really enjoyed it and long runs can be tedious as much as they're fun <laughs> so having folk to chat to it's brilliant and it gets you out of bed on a, on a Sunday morning so yeah definitely I like I'll be telling folk about it to get to get along to it. Nice and obviously it was fine as well most of it's been sort of endurance based but we're quite keen to sort of get the sort of sprints and maybe throws involved as well like what could you think it could be improved in Scotland how could we entice folk to sort of come along like yeah, like having other things there maybe the hills for people that are doing sprints or, or want to get involved in stuff that's shorter I know we had shorter events but even shorter still hills is a great thing we used to do at weekends and it was good for camaraderie um, maybe conditioning circuits like that sort of thing, conditioning down the park, it'll invite people who aren't necessarily want to go out and run 12 mile or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> well, but in terms of competition, like how, what could you think we could change slightly, at like sort of competition wise in Scotland to maybe get the best sort of sprinters along like to these events, like so they don't have to travel down south to sort of like things like, yeah. I don't know what the covenant of BMCs are and the sprints event and throws and stuff yeah. like that, but just sort of getting the best of the best in Scotland to come along and, and compete basically. I think it's just about atmosphere and a, a GA I've done a lot of stuff like, the night of the jumps and um, mm-hmm. that sort of thing, where it's it's small, there's a few events, it's fast paced, there's music, there's maybe even prize money for someone or for sponsorship yeah. or whatever. But I think people in athletics know that there's not a lot of money in it. So yeah. it's just things like simple things. I did the Tonbridge Twilight a few years back and you had your name on your number, you know, uh, like there was yeah, primary school yeah. kids there that were wanting down to watch, like Elite Sport um, and just music atmosphere, commentary, getting people in, a wee burger or whatever, yeah. all of that stuff helps and it's just, it's making it more of an event rather yeah. than just standing in the, in the rain doing, yeah. <laughs> doing long jumps. Yeah, putting an athlete at the heart of it basically. <laughs> like. Exactly, exactly.